Welcome everyone to German Tool Reviews. Today we're going to take a look at two styles of adjustable wrenches that Ghidorah offers. Adjustable wrenches go by many names throughout the world. These are also known as adjustable spanners, crescent wrenches, and English keys. While their popularity has dwindled in recent years thanks to locking adjustable wrenches such as Kinepex's pliers wrench, they are still a tool that is in nearly every toolbox in the world. Taking a look at the catalog entries, we first have the 60 series adjustable wrench, which is available in 6, 8, 10, and 12 inch lengths. There are four variations for surface finish and handle options for each length. The version C is a nickel and chrome plated finish. Version JC is the nickel and chrome plated finish with a plastic handle. Version P is the manganese phosphated finish. And version JP is the manganese phosphated with plastic handle. The main feature that this unit advertises is the addition of a striking phase that can be used alongside a hammer. Now onto the catalog entry for the 62 series. It is offered in the same lengths as the 60 series, but additionally has 15, 18, and 24 inch versions. The only additional clues that are given to differentiate the 62 from the 60 are the notes Sturdy Industrial Design and Ghidorah Vanadium Steel 31 CRV3. For those that are regular viewers, you'll remember the 8 inch 62 series wrench from the KC Tool Unboxing Episode 2. As I mentioned in that video, the unusual thing about this wrench is that it is made in South Africa. A big thanks to Abraham Osman, a South African viewer who gave some additional insight into Ghidorah's role in the South African tool market. As he puts it, Ghidorah is known as the snap-on of South Africa. It is kind of surprising that Ghidorah wouldn't export more of their South African tools if they are that well regarded. Nonetheless, it looks like at least the 62P adjustable wrench made it out of South Africa. I just happened to have an 8 inch version of the 60 series, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a detailed comparison of the two. First major difference is the country of origin. As noted before, the 62 series is made in South Africa, while the 60 is made in China. With that in mind, the price difference between the two is not that drastic, with the 62 only about $8 more than the 60 for this model. The biggest difference by far that you'll notice right away is the quality of the joint in the South African 62 series wrench. The amount of play or backlash on the movable jaw is actually the lowest I think I've ever seen out of any adjustable wrench. This amount of play in the lower jaw is generally a good measure as to the quality of an adjustable wrench. To give you a better idea of what I mean, here is the world's cheapest adjustable 8 inch wrench, also known as the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh 8 inch adjustable wrench. No joke, you can really pick this up for under $5. As you can see, the jaw is about as loose as you can get while still technically being called an adjustable wrench and not a paperweight. Now looking at the 60 series, you can tell that it's not as bad as the Harbor Freight, but still not great either. Now looking at the 62 series, you can see that there is hardly any play in the joint at all. My theory on why the 62 series is so much better is that it is using a significantly larger spring for the worm, which keeps it from moving as easily as you see in other adjustable wrenches. Now let's take a closer look at each of the Ghidorah units with the 62 series up first. As noted before, the worm moves very smoothly with very little backlash. Both sides of the head are ground and polished with the remainder of the wrench containing a phosphated black finish. I do notice that a lot more hand finishing went into this wrench than any I have seen in a while. As you can tell, the edges were ground down on an angle grinder before the finish was applied. Along with the word vanadium, the characters YE are stamped near the end of the handle, which I would guess is to be some kind of forge or foundry marking. There was also a small hanging hole at the end of the wrench. This wrench really does remind me of something that would have been made by a farmer in their backyard blacksmith shop back in the 19th century, before you could just go to the store and buy what you needed. The other side of the wrench is stamped made by Ghidorah. I wouldn't mind them seeing but a made in South African stamping somewhere on the handle since there's plenty of room for it. Onto the 60 series. You could tell right away that there are major design differences in the head assembly. First being that the 60 series contains a laser etched scale that can be used to approximate the jaw opening width. Just like the 62, the 60 series contains a ground head along with a black phosphate finish. The 60 series does contain a striking head surface but I have always found that using a hammer on the wrench is not always the best idea. Instead of a hole, the 60 series has a punch square at the end for hanging. Now let's delve into some detailed comparisons of the two. First, checking the weight of each of the units, the 60 series comes in at 334 grams, or about 11.7 ounces. The 62 series is significantly lighter, coming in at 260 grams, or about 9.1 ounces. The weight difference is mainly due to the thicker handle that is on the 60 series. It is also implied in the catalog that a higher grade steel alloy is used for the 62 series, which could account for some of the differences as well. Using some calipers, we'll take some direct measurements on some of the critical dimensions. First up is the jaw opening width. The 62 series could only open to 24.2 millimeters, which is actually less than the advertised one inch capacity. Therefore, you would only be able to use this particular wrench up to about a 15 16th inch fastener. The 60 series, on the other hand, measured well above one inch at 20 
26.4 millimeters. Another thing you'll notice about the jaw styles on these two is that the 62 series contains large gussets on the corner of the jaws. While I thought at first this was to make it more conformable to a hex nut, I believe it is there for additional strength. As you can see, this large nut doesn't come anywhere close to touching that gusset. The 60 series on the other hand contains some small radius fillets in this place. Measuring the length of the jaws, the 62 series comes out to 21.8 millimeters, while the 60 series measures 24 millimeters. Doing a quick check on the accuracy of the laser at scale it looks to be off by 0.2 millimeters at the 10 millimeter mark. This is only off by 2%, which I'm sure is within their specification. The 62 series has slightly thicker jaws, measuring at 11.3 millimeters versus the 10.1 millimeters measured on the 60 series. Measuring the wrenches at their widest point, the 60 series measured 60 millimeters, while the 62 series was slightly less at 57.3 millimeters. Looking at the dimensions for the worm, the 62 series had a width of 13.8 millimeters, while the one on the 60 series had a was slightly longer at 15 millimeters. The width of the worm barrel was quite different. The 62 series measured 8.3 millimeters while the 60 series was 5.5 millimeters. This is where the spring would go and the larger diameter on the 62 series would support my theory of a larger spring used to minimize the worm backlash. Attempting to measure the pitch on the worm is a little bit tricky but I came out to 3.5 millimeters on the 62 series and 4.2 on the 60 series. Because the pitch was smaller on the 62 series this should correspond to more turns required to fully open the jaws which in turn allows for more precise movements. Doing a quick test, I came out to just under 7 turns for the 62 series and around 6.5 turns for the 60 series. Another thing I want to note is the thickness of the metal from the worm to the edge of the handle. On the 60 series, this is significantly thinner, coming at 7.3 millimeters, while on the 62 series, this area measures 10.5 millimeters. This is generally going to be the weakest part of the wrench, and therefore it is safe to say the 62 series is significantly stronger than the 60 series in this regard. Onto the handle. The 62 series measured 20.65 millimeters width and 6.5 millimeters thick. The 60 series had a variable width handle with the thickness varying from 7.5 millimeters to 10.7 millimeters. The end holes on both units measured 8 millimeters in the largest dimension. For this video, I'm not going to do any full out testing on the wrenches. However, I do have this Kinipex test fixture that is used to demonstrate their pliers wrenches and cobras. It is simply just a tension shaft with a couple of different size nuts on it. One of the nuts on here is a 24 millimeter, which which is just about the capacity of these wrenches. Doing a little demonstration to show you the importance of having a joint that has minimal backlash, I will first set the jaw width of the two Ghidorah units and the Harbor Freight unit to 24 millimeters using some calipers. Then I will turn the 24 millimeter nut a quarter of a turn 25 times back and forth to exaggerate the backlash as a typical adjustable wrench will see. And then we will remeasure the opening to see if it has walked out a bit. Measuring the Harbor Freight wrench, we can see that the opening increased by 0.3 millimeters during that test. The more that the jaw walks out, the more likely you are you're going to round the nut, which is the main reason why many shops don't allow adjustable wrenches to be used anymore. Checking the Ghidorah 60 series, it moved by 0.2 millimeters, slightly better than the Harbor Freight. Checking the Ghidorah 62 series, it is dead spot on 24 millimeters. If it did move, then it was less than a quarter of a millimeter. Now I know a good number of German brand adjustable wrenches are now made in Spain most likely a rebranded Irera. This includes, to my knowledge, the Hazet and Stalvilla adjustable wrenches. It looks like V-Hop still makes their VDE insulated adjustable wrenches in Germany, so that could be another candidate to check out if we decide to do a showdown of German brand adjustable wrenches. As for these two wrenches, the South African Ghidorah Rit wrench really looks like a winner. I think I'm going to pick up most of the 62 series line now that I'm pressed with this 8-inch version. I doubt I will ever have a need for the 24 inch version, so I'll probably skip over that one. Unless that small cost difference is significant enough for you, I would definitely recommend getting the 62 over the 60 series if you're looking to pick one up. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that comparison between two of Ghidorah's adjustable wrench styles. Check out the link in the description to the full review. The KC Tool and Amazon links to these products are also in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.